What's going on YouTube? Alright, so I've got something a little bit different for you guys today. Uh, my band Reasons Above All has a show uh, later today, and for those of you who don't know, the lineup goes uh, two guitarists, a singer, and a drummer. And it's only three people on stage, and there's no bass player. But we do have bass playing at our shows, so what we had to do was uh, basically come up with a programmed bass rig that uh, sounded good. So I ended up coming up with something that uh, was the best use of the equipment that, I, that we already had and purchased some other stuff to make it work. One of my main things with this was that I wanted it to still sound like real bass because I've seen people do the program bass thing before and usually it's just a laptop playing into the PA and um, the issue with that is that the PA speakers aren't it's it's not a bass amp so it doesn't really quite sound like bass so um the thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to make a bass rig that actually reamped itself through a bass amp so it could uh actually sound like real bass and it doesn't get just lost in the mix of the PA because no one's going to hear it through the PA anyways so uh that is basically what we decided to do and it's it's because it's hard to find good bass players, you know? So sometimes you just gotta do it yourself. All right, so first off, we have the bass amp here. This is the Hartke HD500. Really killer bass amp, 500 watts. Very small and portable for uh, taking the gigs very easily. Um, and uh, definitely uh, loud enough for anything you'll ever need. So you wanna start off with a good bass amp that's loud enough, first of all, because this is going to be carrying most of the sound. Uh, and then if you're in a bigger venue, it's got the direct out, so you could just take that to uh, the, the front of house speakers and you're good to go. So the rig is uh, partly this, then the rest of it is essentially... What I've done is I've put it on a pedal board. So this is an old pedal board that I had that I don't really use anymore. So I used, repurposed it and essentially put... Um, all the equipment that we needed on it. So what we have on the board here is the Apogee Quartet interface and uh, we have a radial reamp box. We've got a power strip to provide power for um, the interface as well as the bass amp. Plug that in just so it's all there in one spot. Sometimes at your venues there won't be enough power outlets for you. And then uh, we have a MacBook Pro here that has essentially uh, all of our, our sets plugged into it. So the, let me just kind of break down the purposes of everything. The Apogee here happens to be just the smallest interface that we have, most portable. And what it needs to have is um, outputs, outputs that you could send out. So we've got an output coming out. Uh, to the reamp box and then we've got we're going to have a cable going from the reamp the regular guitar cable this is going to go into the bass amp itself so that's in there so get rid of this case we're going to be reamping bass tracks from the laptop into the, the well, it's going to be reamping from the laptop through the, out through the interface to the reamp box to the bass amp, and this is going to basically make it as close to real bass playing as possible because it's at least going to go through the same system that a bass player would go through. So what I've done is I recorded bass with uh, the Epiphone Thunderbird. So I recorded myself playing the bass into the laptop. What we have here in Studio One is uh, all of our uh, songs, essentially. So um, these are each color is a different song. We color-coded everything. And these are all just bass tracks. We put markers to put everything. And of course, the click is going. And there's tempo changes and whatnot. And it's all there. So we've got this for the bass. And this is for some extra synth stuff if we wanna if we wanna use it on our song uh, "Gone Like June." So what we've got here is these are just dry bass tracks that have been recorded. We get this uh, going to the 
Uh, da, 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 going to the quartet. Okay. So what we need to do is we send um, in our preferences, song setup uh, on outputs, we set an output for sub one, which is actually going to be output three on the Apogee, but um, that's going to be our output for the bass. We set that up and then we change it over here. So instead of going to main out, it should be this, uh, we go to uh, sub one. So that's going through the Apogee output through the reamp box to the bass amp, which if I turn this on for you, bring that down. Real quick, another thing that is important to do is to make sure that um, all the bass levels are consistent. Uh, so you don't have one that just kind of like blows up all over the place. Uh, what I do is I kind of keep, uh, I keep everything going at around um, the minus 12 area. So if it's at minus 12 dBs, it's kind of safe for not like blowing anything. Um, so that's pretty much it. The only other thing is that the drummer needs to pretty much control this because he's going to be back where the bass amp is. So I'll show you what the drummer has to do now. This is the second part of uh, running the bass rig. All right, so if I go ahead and pretend to be a drummer, uh, a couple of things. Uh, you're going to need something for this to, this whole like, it's on a pedal board so that it can, uh, easily be moved and packed up in a case. So um, there's uh, there's Velcro on the laptop and on the Apogee. Everything's Velcroed so it doesn't fly away. Um, so you're gonna need something for it to be on top of because the drummer is somewhat high up with the throne. The drummer's over here playing and he's got access to all the songs here on uh, the laptop. There's not really anything he has to mess with on the quartet. It's just they're uh, going to give him his uh, click volume, which the other thing there is the click, which is important. So we've got these non-expensive uh, in-ear monitor things for him. They're kind of, in -ear, these in-ear monitors are kind of like, uh, they almost work like earplugs because they're like noise canceling. So um, we got this. And we've also got, let's see, we've got this guy. This is just a headphone extension. Fairly inexpensive, just uh, grab it on Amazon, get that adapter. So this is going to give our uh, in-ears a little more uh, slack because the drummer's going to have a cable hanging from him, so slack is good. And this uh, extension will basically plug into the headphone output of the quartet, and this is going to be um, this is going to be playing the click. Uh, so with the click playing, that's in the drummer's ears, and he's keeping time the entire song. So if there's any pauses or gaps in songs, like where there's a part where we like make a, a break, and it's like da. And then there's like clicks before we come in for the rest of it. Uh, the drummer does keep time on the hi hat or whatever. Uh, he has to keep the click going, kind of essentially for the rest of us who don't have these in ears. Uh, and this is just very important for making sure that we stay on time with the bass because the bass isn't going to change for us. The bass won't speed up and slow down. The bass is is set, so we have to play to that. So pretty much all he has to do is kind of just bring this around to the beginning of each song. Hit the space bar to play and just make sure the click is on. You can control his click volume here. You can also control his click volume on the Apogee. But um, he, once it's set, he doesn't really need to change it. But that's how we do it through Studio One. Uh, you could do this in any type of DAW, essentially. You just need an interface that has outputs and a uh, headphone jack. You need some for the drummer to hear the click. And then uh, to make it sound as real as possible, as making it come through a real bass amp, you'll need a bass amp and a reamp box to send that through there. So other than that, 
that is pretty much the base rig that we've been using and it works. All right, so some of the downsides to this type of system is that once you have it fixed in, like a bass track is fixed and recorded into the system, it is fixed and recorded into the system. So uh, one of the issues with that can be like, if you're live and you're just kind of in the moment, you're like, hey, let's uh, take this song uh, a little bit faster. You know, it's like you can't do it because you're not gonna update the bass rig um, in the middle of the show, you know, or if you got like, hey, you know what, let's just take that ending a little bit longer, let's play the chorus a couple more times, you can't do that because the bass rig only has it for a set amount of times. You can kind of maybe plan ahead and come up with live versions that are different or whatnot, um, but you can't come up with stuff on the spot because the bass is programmed to only do one thing. But the other thing is also that when you play live and rehearse to a system like this to the click, when you go into the studio to record, it makes you like, you're already ready, man. Like, you're, you're gonna, because in the studio, you're gonna record to a click, without a doubt. So, um, especially uh, the drummer Richie's uh, studio recordings lately, they've just been, they've been on point because he's been playing. Uh, he's been practicing, like, eating, living, breathing the click track, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's just 100% solid. There's often times when you're in the show, you're on the stage, you're in the lights, and you've got uh, this adrenaline going, and you just get excited, and you start the song way faster than it should have been, <laughs> which has uh, happened to us a, a good amount of times in the past. Uh, but with the click going, it keeps you in check, you know, it's like this is how fast the song should be. You know, even for that matter, say you played a really fast song and you're coming down to a slightly slower song and you had that tempo of the really fast one, now you're down to this slower one, but you play it just as fast as that last one, you know, stuff like that, where uh, songs that have different tempos, uh, sometimes in the moment with the adrenaline going of the show, you won't be able to really compensate for. It can definitely like all go wrong if uh, you start the song and you start, I don't know, a beat late, maybe you didn't hear the first couple of clicks or something, but um, if you start late then like, you know, one beat off and everything's, everything's off and it's very noticeable because the bass is playing and it's, it's gonna be all over the place. So those are some, some things that can happen. Um, but uh, if you just practice to the system, know how to use it, then you'll be good to go, to be honest. Alright, so thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, maybe gave you some ideas, let me know in the comments. Um, leave a like, subscribe, that'd be cool. Any questions or anything, or maybe even suggestions about other things that we can use to uh, make the rig better, or uh, less, uh, less stuff to carry, less components to worry about, whatever, I don't know. Uh, let me know, you know, uh, feel free to leave a comment or a question. Uh, there's going to be some more videos coming very soon, of course. And, uh, yeah, I guess I gotta get going because the show's in a couple hours. So, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.